Hello there, it's been a while, isn't it? But I'm back uh, and I've installed my screen capture software again on the new computer. Uh, this is a video that looks at VE Pro templates. In fact, it's part one. Uh, that's, it's, in fact, it's not just VE Pro templates, it's disabled VE Pro templates. That's quite an important thing. This is part one that looks at what it is. Part two looks at how you set it up. Part three looks at why I'm going to the bother, why this method which when you get down to it, it's quite complicated to set up, but I think terrific in use. So that's the order of it. First of all, let's just look at what it is. Let me sell you the idea here. Um, here I've got a blank template that I've just loaded up and it's got all my tracks here in VE Pro. VE Pro is the program used by VSL to host plugins. That's very efficient. Uh, it looks a bit like that. That's where all the business end is. And so I've got all my strings here and here's my string libraries. There we are, there's Symphobia strings. Um, if I go, oh, I'd like a spiccato, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? And play, oh dear, oh dear, nothing happens. That's all right, that's by design. Because this is all disabled, everything is loaded up, ready to go, but nothing actually works straight out of the gate. It's all ready to work. And so my VE Pro template over here, this loads in about 15 seconds, less than that, about 10 seconds. It's, it's actually loaded by the time Cubase's launch screen is ready to go. It's so fast. And then Cubase, the project takes about 30 seconds to load. So it's pretty quick. You might be used to very long load times on big templates. And the reason why is that everything is disabled. If you look, I go back to VE Pro here, all the contacts over here and various other samplers that I use throughout it, they've all kind of grayed out. And that's because they aren't actually loaded into memory. So this takes absolutely no, this takes a few hundred megabytes. Cubase project takes very little memory as well. What memory it does take is for other things in here, not VE Pro. So it's really, really light. Save times are really quick. Ah, oh, but guy, it doesn't make any sense. Well, here's the clever bit. So now I want to use my spiccato. I press a magic button on my keyboard, which has a touch pad, so I don't use for anything. So I'm pressing the magic button now. There, all right, not much is happening, you might think, but I can see VE Pro's done something, and now Spicato works. And that's because if we now go back here, this was grayed out before, and now it's loaded it into memory. And so that goes for everything. If I now fancy a little bit of brass and go for, well, let's stick with Symphobia, why not? Uh, and I want Spicato there, nothing, nothing's happening. Press the magic button again. Up it loads, and there we have it, and I'm good to go. And so you just build your project like that. If I just press three, four. So, and my masterpiece will be complete if I do exactly the same thing with the staccato. Great, that's now done, and I go on and I build up loads, all my elements that I want, loading them into memory as I go. Then at the end of the day, what I do so I'm ready next time I load it. See these blank things here? These are blank events that will, they are, they're, sorry, they're muted events that when I unmute them will enable the project. So next time I load up, all I do is press bar three, everything loads up in VE Pro and I'm good to go. That's pretty much it as you go around. So if I want to now to go to VSL and load one of their instruments, if we look over here, I've got this set up so that you can see exactly what instance it's using in VE Pro. It's using Core 2. I've named these, it's a long, boring reason why they're named like they are, and it's kind of stupid, but that's what they're named now. Um, Core 2, and I can see it's MIDI in one track 14. I drag this over here. Core 2, it's in the first sort of MIDI pipeline. It's, I know it's buried away in a folder here, so I can't see it. And uh, there is the bass trumpet. There it is, track 14. And so now if I press my magic button again, you'll see it actually doing its thing in action. VSL player takes a second or two to just wake up, seemingly, um, as it certainly is here. There it goes. I think if I do another one, it's quicker. I think it's only that only takes a time, a little while. If I do alto trombone, see if that's any quicker now. Alto trombone. Yeah, there you go. So that's it. So you just build things up as you need them. Save times are lightning fast because it's all separate in VE Pro. I'm running decoupled, if you know what that means. It's a really, really quick way to work. So that's the basics. Um, if you want to know 
how on earth you set this up, how you get going with it. That's the next video part two. And then if you're saying, what, what about using this or this or this or this? The, the, isn't this an over elaborate way of doing it? Uh, that's part three is why I show you all the problems with the other ways, why I've ended up with this. But I'm happy as Larry. This um, is a really fast way to work. Look, I've got pretty much everything I have. Wave Runner Brass. Uh, I recently got some little ones of them. They're really good. I'd forget I had them if they weren't there in my template. And because it takes next to no resources to have them there ready to go, I can just go, oh, yeah, that's used the staccato there, in fact, rather than uh, Symphobia for this one. I can see it's loading all the Wave Runner instruments in the background. And now I've got that good to go. So you don't have to have hundreds of computers and slaves and all the rest of it to load this much instruments. You just have it good to go and load like that the ones you need. OK, that's enough for this one, short and sweet. Um, join me on one of the others if you're remotely interested. Thanks. Bye-bye for now.